so they're probably some of the worst welds you've seen as you can see I've ground them back down because I'm depositing an awful lot of weld on them I also need to get a proper set of clamps as well which would make this a bit easier but you can see I'm slowly let the camera focus hopefully slowly starting to get it so I'm going to try tacking and then try to do a seam weld again on this test piece you can see it's not not really attached and it's got a nasty edge to it now but I'm going to try and seam weld that piece back on again and just keep trying and see how I get on doing that So the last piece there seemed to be the best piece of welding and what I've done is I've increased the wire feed speed and also increased the power that's on my Clark weld and that seems to have given me the best result with the least spatter. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, cut this back off again and we'll try welding that piece again. One thing I have to say on the rather poor welds I've done, they're on really tough. They've actually held really remarkably well considering. Considering they're not very neat or anything like that. That piece of metal is well and truly attached. It's not going anywhere in a hurry. So taking a quick look at that weld, started off not bad actually. Let's see if I can just get a bit more light, see if that'll help. Not bad. Corner piece, I think it's problematic because I think I was starting to burst through the lower metal. 
and I didn't really manage that corner very well at all. But the first piece is starting to look a bit of a better flow from, from my very untrained eye. So what I'll try and do is tidy up this piece, brush a bit of the, the spatter off, and I'll try and do this piece neatly. Now I didn't record all of this, but a very impromptu wire feed problem that we had. Basically the wire started to build up in here, wasn't getting pushed out. Now I think that was because I had a spatter on the end of the nozzle. So it built up in here. So what I had to do was cut it so that it was flat, so there was no kinks or anything. Pull it through from the nozzle and I've now had to refeed. Now when you refeed, you should be able to, I used gloves as well just to make sure you don't cut yourself on the wire. When you push, it should be free flowing. So I managed to push it and feed it all the way through to the end. And now, this may seem obvious if you've done welding before, but I haven't. So what I did was I unscrewed here, took the tip off completely, took the welding head off and also I'm not sure if you can see this clearly or not unscrewed the little wire guide on the end that let me then get the wire fed through this piece up to here and then put that over the top screw it back on and then I can put the overall welding nozzle back on again and there we go it's back to normal and I can also when I'm pulling the trigger I can hear the gas coming out the end nowhere else so I think that's resolved this is all stuff that you should probably learn before you start welding so that's that's where I've made a golden mistake let's put the wire guide back on make sure it's in the groove put that back on screw that back on so it's all ready and I should now be able to quickly test and make sure that the wire feeds correctly. Perfect. That's now wire feeding again correctly. So what I can now do is go to the end here bit bright I'm afraid. Cut the excess wire off, ready to go again. And I think I've said before this is a huge learning curve for me and you're learning as I do so do feel free pop a comment down the bottom there let me know what am I doing wrong what am I doing right that sort of thing. I've had some great comments I think it was Daz on one of the last welding videos gave me some great tips so I really appreciate those but I'll get there practice a little bit more and we'll see how this comes out
I'm not sure if I'm getting better or worse now. I think it might be time to give up for now and have a rethink. <laughs>